We should be live with the SEO Vault. This is episode 88. Uh, every Thursday at 4 p.m., we go live uh, on the Web20 Ranker Facebook page. And we also share in the local SEO uh, community Facebook group, as well as some other communities. Um, thanks for joining in. Uh, I'm joined today by Sophie. Uh, Mike's going to be joining us in a little bit. Uh, I'll keep an eye on and make sure he gets in here. Um, give me a second while I go ahead and share this out uh, to the group. Bear with me for a second. I got to share this to the group. Um, we have some good stuff to talk about today. Share to the group. All right, that's being shared. One more and then we'll get started. Sorry about this. I'm, I'm gonna figure out a new intro now that Zoom changed their whole settings on us and you can't go live and share to your page and the groups all at once that, that I could find. Um, but we are live. Um, we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, we'll, we'll go through, we're gonna talk about Look what uh, SEO news that you need to be aware of, right? We'll have some brand updates. Uh, we don't have a guest this week, um, but we do have some GMB tests to talk about. We'll, we'll review the tests from last week. We'll talk about SEO tests that's going to be upcoming uh, for this weekend. And just some, uh, I have a couple commentary as well for local SEO, some things that I noticed while I was in the last few days uh, working on listings. Uh, we'll have some agency strategy discussion. And then obviously any of your questions, comments, we'll take those as well. Just go ahead and make sure you post those uh, in, in the, under the video here. I see AJ, good afternoon to you too, sir. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Sophie, how are you doing today? I know uh, you were you, you were traveling, I think, the past two episodes, so good to have yeah. you back. How's everything with you? Playing catch-up now. <laughs> Busy? Things so much changes so quickly. Yeah, it does. But good to see you. Glad to hear things are going well. Other than being super busy, which I, I can feel. I can feel that. Um, <laughs> I didn't even know today was Thursday. I was thinking today was Wednesday, so... <laughs> You're not the, you know what? That's not the first time I've heard that today. I, somebody else, um, who else said that today? Someone else told me, I was like, well, today is Thursday. They're like, oh, <laughs> oh, it was, I think it was the, my, uh, the electrician that was, uh, I was talking to this morning. I think that's who said that, but interesting. Yeah, the week is crazy. So, um, all right, let's see comments what we have going on, refresh this. All right, so I will get started here. Let me run through here. Um, let's see. So a couple brand updates. I wanna let everybody know if, if you haven't signed up, be sure to sign up for the free webinar we're having on May 26th. So it's, uh, it's, less than two weeks away. Uh, it's at 2 p.m. Eastern. It's, I would imagine, probably going to be, you know, we always say about 45 minutes. They tend to run over an hour. We'll try to record it. Um, we had to increase our Zoom account for this one. It is a free webby. It's open to the entire community, uh, but still saying that even though we did increase our Zoom account, there's still a limit on. So make sure you sign up um, because I would imagine we're probably going to fill up the, the limit again. Um, we're going to talk about local SEO, Google My Business. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the testing we're doing, what, what conclusions we're drawing from that. We're going to do uh, sort of an, an AMA roundtable style as well. So bring your questions to us. Uh, be prepared to share your questions if you want to 
you know, if you're comfortable enough, you get, we can, you know, whatever. You, we can ask specific campaign questions or more general questions, but bring your questions. There's gonna be an entire panelist uh, available. Um, I'm really excited for it. So make sure you sign up. Uh, where, where can they sign up for the link? Is, I just dropped the link in the comments. The link is in the comments. So um, in the comments here, I, I'm, I also know there is probably a pin post over in the local uh, SEO community Facebook group. Um, go register. You do have to register, but completely free to attend. And it'll be a good time. We're going to have a lot of people there and we're going to be sharing a lot of stuff. So um, hopefully we see everybody uh, at the Webby. So that's good stuff. Sophie, will you be there? Yeah, I'm. Bucky will be there. Okay, awesome. We're going to have all different kinds of team members there. So it'll be fun. Lots of people will be there. And lots of info. I've, I've already started what, working on what I'm going to be putting together and sharing. I'll be going over some of my campaigns, like, uh, you know, kind of a behind the scenes look of what some of what I'm, I'm working on and testing. And um, like I said, we'll also reveal some tests, uh, tests as well. So, all right. Um, so make sure to sign up for the Webby. Uh, what other updates? A couple other updates. Uh, again, just some brand updates. Um, tomorrow, I should have, well, one, over at localclienttakeover.com, there is a ton of new video assets and videos that we put up on the free GMB course. There is a lot. Um, I know over the last, if you haven't che checked out the course over there in the last month, there's a lot more content added now in the free GMB course. Um, Go check that out. And we're going to put another video up there. I've actually just uploaded it this afternoon, getting it into the course now. Um, just constant updates, constant refresh. I, I think that makes over 100 videos in that course. Um, and, you know, it's free. So go check that out. New videos added there. Um, what else going on? Uh Web 20 Ranker, big announcement. I think this is probably the last one. Then we'll move into maybe some news. Uh, um, content upgrades. We are doing content upgrades uh, throughout Web 20 Ranker. Over the next couple weeks, you will be seeing just every piece of content being upgraded throughout the store. Everything from uh, citations, Descriptions, social descriptions, brand link descriptions, guest post articles, uh, press releases, blog posts, GMB posts, all content upgraded. And there's no price increase. We're not increasing prices. We're just upgrading it um, as just part of just making everything better. So there's that which is a big, again, not all of it's done yet, but it, over the next week, we're, we're already phasing it out. It's already been upgraded throughout all the GMB campaigns. Uh, we're working on citation socials and all that stuff right now. That'll be done by Monday. Um, and then beyond that, the following week is all remaining like our guest post articles and press release stuff and stuff like that, which is, if you know, like that stuff, I mean, I, I really, you know, we, we've been working on content for a long time at Web20 and just excited to be able to offer a comprehensive upgrade. You're gonna have unique content on all your citations again without paying exorbitant rates. You're gonna have unique content on all your socials and all your, all your brand links. It's just gonna help those signals index a little bit better and you're not gonna to have to pay any more for it. And we're still gonna have um, the premium option available if you have real picky clients as well. Um, like a really premium uh, high-end option as well, but um, upgrades throughout. So very excited about that. Um, I think that's pretty much all the updates. Make sure you're over at Web20 though. We're always publishing new blog posts. I know in the last month we had two, one updated and one pub, new one published. If you haven't read those, you should. Um, we have, again, very 
impactful if you're an agency owner, right? These are things that, you know, basically we're, we're identifying pain points in the industry and trying to provide you solutions with them. So this last one was uh, uh, client wins, campaign wins, which is super important for client retention. And it might be the best client wins article I've read. Uh, Sophie, you, you were the author uh, with- uh, oh, yeah. That was a long one. I think Jesse contributed some and Nikki contributed some as well. But Sophie, uh, Sophie was the author. I was thinking at some point I wrote a client retention guide at one point. I might want to try to incorporate mine into yours. Like your, it was just, it was in everything you need to know when it comes to uh, presenting client wins on your campaigns. Um, and it's all helps for client retention, right? Oh yeah. What not to share. We said, we talked about that too. It's every, it, it was so thorough and comprehensive. I, I would recommend if you own an agency, you send whoever does your uh, client communication, your client success manager, whoever that is in your agency, if it's you, great. If you have a, you know, a person that does that, have them go read that blog post and take notes on it. Because it's not just a blog post, it's, a, it's an in-depth training guide on client reporting and wins that will definitely, I mean, you know, we've come just all the, the horror stories we've heard over the years, our own experiences of what's working best and what didn't work well. And, you know, just every tip and tactic that we could find and compile, um, it's in there. So head on over there. It, it, it's already hard enough to go through the whole sales cycle, close a client. You got to keep those, keep them on board, right? As long as possible. And obviously, you're always going to have some nightmare clients if you're an agency owner. If you're in business long enough, you're always going to deal with some nightmares. But in general, uh, retention is super big for scaling your agency, in my opinion. When you start focusing on what can I do uh, to reduce those churn numbers, what, what strategies can I put in place, it directly impacts uh, the scalability of your agency. So really good post. Um, great job, Sophie. <laughs> like that's really, really good. So um, I, I dropped I, it in the comments so they can see. Absolutely. Uh, awesome. Thank you. You want to, you want to segue into the news? I know Mike said he might be jumping on, but he's also on a call. Um, and his call's running late. He's not on yet. You want to handle the news? Yeah, I read most of them. So the first thing is the call history feature that's showing data. Have you seen that on any of your GMB listings? Because I have not. I haven't looked because I just, I use local Viking and the data's in there. Like, I, um, I, I actually was in, I was in the GMB business manager just the other day working on some listings, but I didn't even look at the insights. Um, yeah, it it's not showing on everyone, but if you had the feature already and it said no or no data available, now it's showing them like their name and phone number and everything. So I actually I just while you're talking, I just logged in and one of these listings, it is there is a call history in here. It shows whether it was answered, missed. Um, you can see the history if they called repeated. Interesting. So very cool. Um I wonder if they'll use that to count if you don't answer the phone, like if that's how they're going to start tracking that better. That's, that's a good point. That, that's a good point, especially because you know, they're trying to integrate local service ads even more. And that's a, that's a big factor, making sure that you answer your phone. So very cool. I wonder if that could impact your rankings if you aren't answering your phone. It's a good question. We know it's supposed to impact your visibility of getting your ads shown if you don't. Yeah, I know the ads. I'm, I mean, like local, like no, just know, organic yeah, local. That's it's. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, or if they're working towards that in the future, like that's their ultimate exactly, goal. Like, if if they're sending you calls and you're not answering that phone, yeah, that's that's a quality issue there, right? I mean, what they they'd want to send that call to somebody else. I feel like they roll out a lot of features in their ads first and then they push it into organic. So yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, as a business though, if you are a local business, you should be trying to answer your phone, but you know what? There are listings I know of, especially like lead gen listings that 
might not have their phones answered until that listing's monetized either. So <laughs> maybe that's how they're going to filter them out or something down the line. I better go back into my lead gen listings and make sure I just, even if I don't have it right now, I have a bunch of them just going dead. I'm going to go and just send them somewhere. <laughs> some local business will get some free, free calls. That's yeah, they might. Now this, okay. There's another one. Google my business insights is now showing bookings reporting data too. I thought you could already see that. Well, I'm already logged in. So let's see booking. Booking insights. It's starting actually, to show up only in some though. It's available for like hotels. If they have the integrated booking, probably, right? In the yeah. booking. Okay. I wonder, you know how some listings will use the booking link just as another signal? I wonder if they'll still show it for those. Not sure. <clears throat> like I had seen HVAC companies and cleaning companies using it, even though they don't take bookings online. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure. Then Google My Business performance report to show driving directions and website visits. They're migrating it to show more data. Add direction requests and website visits. Oh, so they're going to combine it with the calls and messages, like the customer actions graph. They're going to just add more data to it. Oh, okay. It's a lot more data. And then oh, what else are they doing? The schema markup is now, the validator is now live. I'll have to check that out. There's some schema stuff. Yeah, they, they ended up moving the structured data testing tool to schema.org. Google did? Well, because they're phasing, they're getting ready to phase theirs out. I saw but, they phased it out or they phased it out on my account. And Mine was still loading. I just was in the other day, but yeah, maybe they're phasing out in phases or whatever, but I guess to keep that, uh, to keep that availability, they, you know, they, they put it over at schema.org. Uh, anybody that's interested, I think it's, it's validator.schema.org is mm -hmm. the new structured data testing uh, tool. That's similar. Did you hear how WordPress bought all of the or, uh, Creative Commons images, so they didn't go away. I did hear that. I didn't look into it much, but I did hear that, yep. They're gonna have over a million new images. And then there's reports of the Google 10 pack showing. They think it's a bug. Have you, I haven't seen that. With I saw the screenshots when they were reported and I thought that was for, uh, oh, what type of listings were those? Um, this one's like da data science. Some sort of like SAS. Were they schools? Uh, I could have sworn it was like something where maybe they were trying to just show an abundance of info because I thought it was like some type of, I, I don't know. I, I, this one's what, a data science course in India. Yeah, like it wasn't like a local business. It was more like a resource, like a local resource almost. Like that was... I was like, I'm wondering if they did it because it wasn't really like a, it wasn't like you're advertising a, a cell phone repair store, right? It wasn't yeah. like that. It was, it was like a resource, like a, a community resource or an education resource or whatever it was. It was, I thought it was something like that. I was, I was like, maybe they're testing something like that, like a local resource or something. I, I don't know. Maybe. I don't like how big it is. It's too long. Yeah. That's going to push the organics down so much. Oh, yeah. Everything's pushing organic stuff. So what is it? Data science course in India. So courses, it was like education courses. So I'm wondering if maybe they were just trying to, I don't know. Interesting. Maybe it's because right? of education. That's, I don't know. You're right. Um, then the SEO sessions at Google IO are starting. I thought that was online this year. Oh yeah, it is. Are you going to watch these? Oh, they're pre recorded. I, I signed up for that. I thought they were live online. What is it? The Google I.O. thing. It's like they're, they have all their live courses. 
Then there's an unconfirmed ranking update. That's the last thing. An unconfirmed ranking update. Yeah, they it's started being noticed on Thursday, which they're saying maybe they've moved their unconfirmed updates from Friday to Thursday. Let me go see. So we got that SERP volatility tool over at Web20 where we basically compile all the different... Uh, they're all they're all saying that it's extra volatile a lot of them are saying that it's like sponsored content and news sites that are outranking them now press releases you know where you get the best best value on your press releases at web20ranker.com <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> and they're even getting better by the way because we just redeveloped our whole syndication platform but anyway i'm sorry sorry for interrupting the news with a, a pitch <laughs> i'm sorry um that's Danny uh, sullivan said there was no core update but that things change often yeah they're being ambiguous and this was what just the day that they're seeing some signs of this yeah it had to be super recent because the article is really short interesting so that is interesting. I mean, it's always now. I, I think they're talking organic here. Like, yeah, they are. Um, but like local local refreshes seem to happen over that Thursday Friday period too. Um, but that's not what they were talking here. But I, I haven't looked since I heard about it today. I mean, I looked at some rankings earlier this morning and didn't see anything out of pocket. But what are they, so they're saying they're seeing a lot of movement with uh sponsored content and news type of content yeah interesting sites who are using the keywords a lot less like less in-depth content which seems like the opposite direction yeah yeah i mean they're always doing little tweaks and stuff and and uh you know, tweaking the algos and stuff. So maybe that's, we'll see anybody, anybody watch, uh, anybody that's viewing this, anybody seen any big movement anywhere? No one said anything about that, but AJ said he's been seeing the 10 pack in India. Okay. Interesting. I don't want that as a user. Yeah. I haven't seen anything locally in the rank in the organic rank tracker yet but again that doesn't mean i wasn't particularly i didn't see now these these sites a lot of them are in the uk though too so it could be they're just six or eight hours ahead of us ah that makes sense too we had, might not have came yet might not have all right let's see what we have going on um Where's Mike? We need to talk about his GMB signals. Let's see. So let me just see, go back through the news quick and see if there's anything else we want to expand on there. Uh, that call history feature is pretty cool. Now that I looked at one, it, if you don't have call tracking set up, it's going to be really nice. Um, you can go and say, you know what? We, you know, you're just not answering your phone, right? Or something like that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you can see, do they, are they recording them? No, it's just, no. it's just like the contact info that they're showing. Yep. Just the, and whether you answered it, how long it lasted. And then if, uh, okay. So a, a very basic call uh, system, but if you don't have anything else, seem that would probably be a little helpful. Um, interesting to see where that goes over the over time how it evolves um especially if you have a google phone yeah. um let's see so i actually um the gmb we can move into the gmb test because that was actually one of mine that was one of my new listings i wanted to run some new signal tests on them stuff you know like if we test like press releases and stuff like every six months to 12 months, I like to come back and just do like on a brand new listing, a standalone, just to see how much movement we're getting from different signals. Um, so the test 
on last weekend's uh, SEO Mad Scientist uh, that we wrote about was a, a brand new listing that we set up. This small town, um, it was a PC repair uh, listing, brand new, doesn't even have a website, new signals. The only thing that was done to it was a very small GMB description, had three categories and hours were put on and very basic stuff like that. Um, and the features, you did the features with the check mark, right? Um, well, well, before the test, so. Oh, you're, you're talking about after, I'm talking about after. Yeah, F, so what I did was I, I ran the signal test and got the results from this. And then I used this listing uh, for the updated GMB optimization training video for that, not only for my, the internal team at Web20 and the brands, but also that we're going to put over at the local client takeover GMB course. Um, so it, multiple uses for the, but so, but this, yeah, so this was before you even did like the listing optimization or anything had just very minimal. It was, it didn't have a web, still doesn't have a website. Um, but so what we did was I just wanted to see what does spy themselves PBN map embeds do, right? Um, I've tested recently just PBN links with no embeds, no nap info, uh, linking to different things like GMB CID, GMB short URL, et cetera. You don't see movement from them when you just link to this GMB. So I want to test the embeds with the nap. What do we see from that? So what I did was brand new listing, we ran 20 GMB or 20 PBN map embeds. They were just PBN links, but unlike a regular PBN link where you're just linking out to a website somewhere, these we actually linked out to the GMB listing, but then we embedded that GMB uh, listing into, the, into the, the page, the post, and then we put a nap section under it um, so that we had the nap signal there and ran 20 of them. The anchors I used was pretty, I took like maybe five keyword variations. I, you know, spun them across the different, the 20, and we saw great results, like really fast results. They started placing the PBN links um, on the 21st of April and up the whole way up until then, even up until the 25th, the entire geo grid was red. It wasn't in anywhere in the top 20, that listing anywhere um, for any of the keywords. It just didn't show. It was completely brand new. It showed nowhere. Might've showed in one, it actually might've had one node in one keyword. One keyword had one node, I think, out of a 13 by 13, but it, it had nothing really. Um, on the next, so on the 25th, it took a snapshot and then seven days later, that seven days later, that snap sh snapshot just transformed from all red to, again, it didn't put them in the three pack, but it moved them, just completely moved all the, the results are the screenshots, the results, everything's in the weekend update over at Web20 Ranker on the archive. So if you aren't signed up, you gotta go over there to read about it, look at the results, see exact anchors I used, how I targeted, but they, still nap signals. What, what was it, right? That PBN map embed was an unstructured citation. That's really what it was. And they're indexed too, because they don't get completed until um, all those posts get indexed. So it's not like building 20 citations and, you know, struggling to get half of them indexed and then some of them fall out. And uh, it's, they were 20 signals and they were unstructured citations basically and they definitely move the needle by themselves really quickly. Um, and that's what we like to test. We wanna know what signals have real impact on, you know, because again, I'm in the process of always constantly updating our campaigns for not only at Web20, but for our client stuff, for my own stuff. Need to know what moves the needle efficiently. This data goes back into the campaigns, right? You're gonna start seeing Guess what we're gonna start doing in our GMB uh, campaigns at Web20? One of the first things, we're gonna get you those unstructured citations, those unstructured um, NAP and embedded citations. So um, uh, we have other tests coming 
Uh, I have other signal tests running on new listings as well. Um, a lot of them I like to retest every so often. Like the next one we're gonna probably be publishing is a press release test uh, on new listings again. I like to just see what's, what results do you get from doing it, right? It's, there's nothing better to see whether you should be doing a signal or not than do it by itself and measure the results you get on a new listing. Um, I think that's important. So that's the test. Basically, if you want to, again, if you want to be, uh, you want to go see what those tests are, we have the archiver at Web20 Ranker. Go sign up. It's free. There's no cost to get in the test. How many, and we do so many tests and we, and we publish it all for free. Um, can you tell them about the compilation you're doing, Sophie, a little bit? Yeah, it's um, 90 pages of summaries. So it's not even all the data. And it's very helpful to see it all laid out. Because when I was writing it, you read all these tests and then to see them all kind of in order of what we tested and why and how it flows together, it makes a lot more sense. So we're releasing that in the next couple of weeks, right? I think as a, probably as a PDF, we'll have a complete summary of all of our tests and we're going to cut we're going to periodically go back through and update that pdf so at a glance you know if you do seo and you want to know does this signal work or should i be doing this or what's how should i do this to get best results pop open that pdf scan down through the summaries of what those tests we did and you have all that data at your fingertips uh, to implement into your own strategy. So yeah. that's really exciting. And we're going to try to keep it updated every quarter then. So every quarter we'll be pushing out a, uh, an updated uh, testing summary or updated guide and it's free. It's all free. You just got, I just want your email address for that. That's all. <laughs> I've already used it as justification because I had a client who didn't want to do something and I why are you paying me if you're not going to take my advice? And I showed her and she's like, oh, okay. So it works. All right. We got some questions in here. AJ says, are you seeing drastic changes on local Viking when you Google it's much higher? I'm not seeing anything like that, AJ. If you're seeing something like that, uh, you know, if you don't mind, I know we're I, you're in my PM. You want to send it over and let me look? I'll look at it. But I haven't seen anything like that. Um, Vincent asks, are you hiring writers at the moment? Um, uh, are we hiring writers? I do think there is an application process on the site. Um, I don't personally hire the writers. So I don't know what our requirements are right now. Um, Tony handles all of that. But I do know that is part of our content upgrade uh, across the store. Uh, we are phasing out some writing positions um, and we're putting in new standards and, and things like that. So I would say go to the, go to the careers page and, and go through the application process there. So, and, and not just writers, we're, we're hiring, um, you know, if you're a writer, go, you can go apply and we, we definitely take the resume there and keep you in the Rolodex. Um, but, SEO positions, we have several open, we have more than several. I, offhand, I know specifically we have probably at least seven or eight positions we're hiring at. Um, so, you know, and that's over just on the Web20 Ranker careers page, you can apply through there. Uh, Maxine asks, reports client retention. How do you estimate an increase in the client's business specifically with your SEO work? came from your work versus word of mouth past clientele. Um, so that's a good question, Maxine. A lot of what I do there. So the question Maxine is asking um, for anybody that couldn't read my mind while I was reading her question uh, is how do we, uh, you know, show an increase specifically from the SEO? Like how do we show that? How do we show our clients a correlation between the work we do and the results in their business. And, you know, I'll tell you there, there is, uh, you know, I don't, first, I think there's probably always room for people to interpret data differently. Um, and I think you run into that sometime with clients. And I remember 
a, a client situation where they actually did try to say the increase in their GMB calls um, from their GMB listing came from ads they were running, uh, like billboard, billboard stuff. And, you know, unless you have tracking set up uh, to attribute that, it's, it's hard to argue against that, right? Um, so depending on what else they have going on there, like in that particular instance, like if that billboard company just used his regular number and they went out and Googled, it's possible. It's possible that some of that increase came from that. But, you know, to, to really track that correctly and to see where your marketing spend's going, the company or the marketer should be doing some type of attribution for that. So the billboard company in that case should have used a tracking number on that billboard. Um, so that way you can track um, the calls just from those billboards, right? The, the, the fact that they didn't kind of, you know, how do, how do you, you know, are they just, in my opinion, they're just riding the coattails of other marketing men if they're not using tracking numbers. So one of the first things is, is if your client takes calls, you would track the calls. Um, track the calls. There's, there's tons of technology out there that you can, you know, really get attribution down really, really well right now. Um, so I think with call tracking, you can do some pretty, pretty impactful things there. Um, uh, so if you benchmark and you have call tracking and you do benchmarking, you know, you have data to work with. Can, can you insulate yourself against, you know, another marketer trying to take advantage of some of those calls if they don't have tracking? Maybe not, right? You might not be able to insulate yourself against that. Um, but I think looking at the calls, benchmarking those is a really good way to, to talk about the value of SEO to their business. And you would say, you know, when, when I was coming in, uh, before, I, before I came in and started doing the SEO for you, your GMB listing was bringing you, you know, this many calls. Yeah. And today we're at this many. Um, your website, you put custom goals and analytics on, your website was bringing you this many calls. Now it's bringing you this many. Um, I do think if you do that route, though, you do have to understand about, uh, cyclical market conditions. You have to, you have to start, you got to look at not only month over month, but you also have to look at year over year to get historic data. Um, you know, I think tracking that data against a benchmark and showing improvement would, would be a really strong correlation there. It does it a hundred percent ensure that you're going to get all the credit you deserve. No, it doesn't. You're going to have you're going to, like I told you that story of that one client that said the billboard. Okay. You know what, how to, you what am I going to say? Right. It's, it's obviously from the signal creation and you can see the visibility on the GMB. You can see the call volume going up, et cetera, getting all these new keywords. It obviously wasn't the billboard um, that was doing it. So you know, I would say something like the geo grids would help to validate the phone calls. Cause if you can show the increase in phone calls and the growth of the visibility in like in conjunction, it almost serves as two-step verification. That's a really good point. Stacking data that supports the data, right? So if you present the phone calls, then present either keyword rankings or a geo grid improvement or even impression improvement or something like that. And you can start stacking all those wins where, you know what you're saying, well, here's your increase in phone calls. And then here's your increase in the geo grids and the rankings and impressions. And, and you know what, you just sold them, right? You just made your point right there. Yeah. Um, so I like that. Make sure you use multiple uh, key performance indicators, multiple KPIs, uh, um, and stack those together. And I think, you'll you know, I, I've, I've had clients that you, you report really good wins. And like, another one is just like, you know, well, I, when I started, you weren't on page one. And three months later, you're now on page one for this top level keyword. That's because of my SEO, right? Um, yeah. But that should also then, you should also see 
you know, being on page one might not be a direct win for their business, but it's, it supports then when you talk about, well, here's the increase in impressions, here's an increase in new users to the website, increase in calls, increase in uh, conversions, et cetera. But you're still going to have people that are like, well, I still don't yet see it, right? You're always going to have those outliers, but I think just having a really uh, multiple KPIs that you report, it push, you know, makes it, you know, less and less likely that you'll get that type of pushback. Um, she sorry. asked a follow-up question. How do you best use the call tracking since Google doesn't like to see multiple phone numbers listed? Call tracking number becomes your primary number. Your local number moves down to the secondary number. And then if they have any 800 numbers or anything else like that out there, I'd also add that as a secondary number too. Um, but yeah, as long as you do that, you get their, uh, you get their data you know, on that GMB listing, you shouldn't see any issue with, with using call tracking number. Um, AJ um, asked if you're seeing, if anyone's seeing GMB reviews not showing up. Heard a ton of, heard about this a ton. Yes, they're not showing up. Um, you know, if, if they're, they, whatever filter they put in place is really strict right now. They, you still can put reviews and you still get reviews that show. So not all reviews are not showing up. It's just that if they're like, they're unsure about the account or there's not like a trust factor there, they just won't show that review. They're keeping them basically filtered in the back end, um, uh, not visible. I've heard about this for probably the past two weeks. Uh, uh, somebody I know that does reviews, somebody, I know, yep, somebody that I know does reviews, they, they're seeing it, multiple agencies are seeing it, you know, people that do reviews in volume, that type of stuff probably is dead. If you know what I mean, like the review vendors, that's probably done. Um, I think that does seem to be a trust issue with it. Um, I, I think trust, so. Uh, Dave asks, how many calls should a garage door company be getting on a monthly basis from their GMB? Tough to say. Um, where how how's their rankings right and what what size city are they in um i think those are the two big factors it's going to depend on what what size city they're in or or if they're not in a city obviously you know what what's their demographic of where that listing's located at and then how are their how's their visibility there um a gmb listing that's brand new in a in a major metro area probably isn't producing any because there's no visibility whereas you know, if you get in the three pack in a major metro area, um, uh, you know, a, a garage door company uh, in a month, you know, it wouldn't be surprising for them to get. Uh, let me just think back in a month. Uh, you rank need, at the top for garage door repair in a Chicago suburb. Well, in the suburbs, yeah, I mean, I would say, I mean, I can pull some, I can, I can look back through some data and see if I have any, anything on that. I mean, we've done a ton of garage door listing work. So I, I'm sure I have historic data. I can look, obviously I can't share any type of identifying info, but I can see if we have something in like a similar size area that's also, you know, ranking well, and I can kind of let you know, um, uh, go ahead and it maybe if you tag me up at local client uh, local sorry local uh, local SEO community Facebook group if you you know go ahead and tag me in there in the post that way I can circle back and do a little see if I can dig some data up. Um, personally, I don't have any GM, uh, garage door listings myself. I have some other niches I could talk about, um, but I have listings that are you know in mid sized cities. 200, 300,000 that rank at the top, you know, they produce um, 60 to 70 unique calls a week. So that maybe gives you the idea. Um, I, I did a lot of locksmith work, which is a similar niche. Um, and those would be 
uh, a city like, you know, maybe like North Vegas, which would probably be similar to that or right outside of Vegas on the south, there's that other starts with an S or something, I think, in those areas, paradise, I think, you know, something like that, I think in a week call wise, um, again, 50 to 70 calls a week at the, when you're at the top, I think isn't, isn't um, unrealistic from a GMB listing in like maybe a locksmith niche or an appliance repair niche. So maybe similar type of niche there, right? That, that emergency type of call niche. Um, but I, I'll definitely look specifically on the, those type of listings I worked on to get you a better number, right? But that kind of gives you an idea maybe, maybe gives you an idea. Um, all right. Let's see. David asked what company we recommend to set up the VoIP, like voicemail. Maybe for call tracking, is he? No, I don't know what that is, what, the, what he's referring to. Like Boy, what voice over internet. I mean, I call, tra me, if he's talking about call tracking, um, it depends. I think if you're going to run, if you're run, if you're going to use it for PPC, um, if you're going to use the call tracking for, and you need dynamic, that's going to based on like, they click this ad and they're going to get one number or they click this keyword. They're going to get, if you, if you need that, you know, I'm going to probably say, look at something like call rail or something like that. If you don't need that level of technology, um, I'm, I'm going to probably recommend, um, you know, I got to keep it, it within the brands. Mark has a nice call tracking system called Jensen.ai. Um, I, I have an account there. I also have a grandfathered account that I use at Analytic Call Tracker, but I had the one time grant, the one time fee one. I don't have the monthly one. Um, uh, you know, I would look at Jensen though, uh, if you can't get a hold of a one time. Um, or you know what? You know what else does really good? If, you, if you're a little bit tech savvy, you could do a, most of that in Twilio, right? Um, if you're an agency and you're looking at, you know, maybe offering some additional services at your agency and maybe look at high level as well, because that's like a whole essay. That's like a whole software as a service system. You can actually resell your clients, integrate with Twilio, um, and it does some call tracking in there as well. And you can kind of track your lead flow and stuff. So I think there's a couple different options, anything from maybe a grandfathered analytic call tracker to Jensen.ai to, you know, if you really need that dynamic stuff, which I don't think the other ones have yet, call rail, right? But they're you're going to pay for that too. They're, they can get pricey when you're, when you're, you know, multiple clients, lots of calls. Um, I think there's a couple options out there. Um, there was a, darn, there was a question that just slipped out. John, the debate over. Yeah, it's, I thought, and I missed it and I can't see, I have to go in and look at it. I guess. There, he's seen debate over using the call tracking number and citations, citations to account for phone calls because it gets messy when the services end. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, that can be right. If you, if you part ways, um, it was, so if you're an agency, right, if you're an agency and you supply the call tracking number um, and they leave you, yeah, that's, you're going to have to figure that out, right? Um, if you're a business owner, yeah, that, that could be, I def, so I don't know if I'd use it on citations though. The problem being is it's going to skew your analytics on the, if you go into like the call tracker and look at your calls, because as soon as you start building citations on those directories, you get inundated with marketing calls from salespeople from those directories. Like that's their lead magnets. And if you're trying to get like ideal numbers um, from your local SEO work, at, at one point I was actually using call tracking on it, but then I realized like, man, I, it's just killing my, like eventually once that dies down, yeah, there's some of those citations can give you traffic and calls to your business, to your clients, right? They definitely can, but it's that initial wave that it's like, it just skews it totally. 
Um, and we actually got to the point with our own clients and stuff where we actually warn them. Like we let them know we're getting ready to build citations and to be prepared to be inundated with these marketing calls, just ignore them. You don't need to do anything. The ones that we had to do stuff with, we've already handled it, right? But they do. As soon as you start building citations, man, they get your clients get flooded. So I don't know that I would use a call tracking number on those just because of that, because I don't want, because I'm going to, I want, what I want to use my call tracking number for is I want to be able to, one, I get, I establish a benchmark, right? So if I'm trying to establish a benchmark on call tracking that first month or so, when I just start the campaign, I want, I want as pure data as I can get. And if I'm building citations, I get all these calls flooding in. Suddenly it looks like that first month benchmark is way higher than it is right? Because I got marketing calls. And even if you sort and filter them, it still messes your data. So I don't know that I would do that. I think I would just use it on the, the big assets that I'm going to really push traffic to, like my GMB. Um, if I have PPC running, I have landing pages, obviously you want to use it there. Um, and on the website, um, maybe on the website, you know, if you're going to use it on your GMB to use the same one on your website, yeah, as I guess you could, right? It's depends, depends on what, if you have analytics and custom goals set up and all that stuff, you technically don't need a tracking number on your website if you have goals set up because you can track the calls that way, but it makes it good if you want to listen to calls. Are they answering calls? Um, are the leads good? Are, are the calls good quality? Stuff like that. So lots of different options out there when it comes to that stuff, but I probably want to use it on citations, just the GMB and the website for me personally. So, um, but, but yeah, it can be messy if you break up, but also from an agency perspective, if you're providing them their phone number, right. And it's on all their data, it makes you a little bit more sticky, maybe. Right. It might make your service a little more sticky. Right. Just like if if you start packaging some software with your uh, SEO campaigns that you sell or your marketing campaigns, suddenly you're not just a marketer, but you now supply their email. Right. And now you do all their SMS messaging and you now supply all their phone numbers and all their data goes through you. It makes it harder to break up with you. Might help client retention, might help you grow your agency a little better, too, from that perspective. So. Um, lots to, lots to consider there, right? Lots to think about. Um, I, I do think if you're in an agency, probably look at call tracking, right? You want to, even if it's a basic thing, right? Even if it's a basic, I, I think you want to set it up. There's a lot of positives there, but there is stuff you got to figure out. It's obviously a little bit of technical work and then some, some considerations that, you know, what do I do with the phone numbers when they leave, offer to sell them out give a give a breakup fee and say hey if you want to take the phone number with you here's what it costs you know whatever there's i think there's options there so um absolutely you can turn them into a monthly ongoing maintenance or a, a software right you just subscribe to our call track whatever right you can you can absolutely package something like that that's why i really like high level because it gives you that um it gives you that ability in your agency kind of to give them like unlimited SaaS accounts which is really cool so I don't know. I'm going on huge rant. <laughs> uh, sorry. I just went there and, uh, all right. I think, uh, Sophie, what do you got? I've, I've talked for the last hour and I'm tired. <laughs> no, I got nothing else. The only thing I like about high level even more is the chat widget. Cause I feel like so many people don't have that and they think it's such a cool feature. It's like one of those things that's a shiny, sparkly new object. Yeah. Where they have and if you, you know, why set up talk when you just set up their chat widget, it integrates with all the other communications and you can do triggers from it and there's so much you can do from it. So I agree. I agree. Good stuff. I guess we, let's, we, we, let's close. Uh, I think this was a good session. I don't want to drag it out no more for anybody that's still with us. Thank you for sticking around the end. Uh, hopefully you got some good points out of it or we had some good conversation, right? It's always good to have good conversation. Sophie, thank you for being on. Appreciate Welcome. it. Um, now, now we gotta see if Mike, where's Mike at, right? He, he's, he, he got off this whole episode. Did you see when that? He, but, yeah. Uh, 
All right. Um, maybe next week we'll be with Milas, but thank you everybody for tuning in at the SEO Vault every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern, Web20 Ranker Facebook page and the local SEO Facebook community. Um, replays are on our YouTube channel uh, and we have a podcast. You can download us and take us with you. That cliche I say every time, which really sucks. <laughs> but thank you. It's the SEO Vault. Thanks for watching. I'll see everybody later. Bye.